Before we dive into the episode, I want to ask you something. How would it feel to be able to get up each morning knowing that you call the shots? That you can live and work when, where, how, and with whom you choose? That you get to reap all the benefits of your own talent and expertise and are no longer slaving for someone else's dream, but living your own? You get all this and more with a digital business. And if you'd love to start one but have no idea where to begin, then I have something just for you. I've created a free resource called the Digital Business Quick Start Guide. By downloading this guide, you'll discover my simple digital business launch formula that will help you design your business fundamentals and learn what you need to do next to get your business launched fast. So head on over to nicolohara.com forward slash quick start hyphen guide, or you'll find the link in the show notes to download your guide now and get started on your way to finding the freedom and success only a digital business can give you. Do it now. Don't waste another second of your time that you could be planning your digital business launch. Your future self will thank you. Now go and enjoy the episode. How do you feel about technology to help you be more productive and motivated? Just something else to learn or does your heart beat faster with excitement when a new system is launched? Personally, anything that's going to save me time, keep me on track and make me look good, I'm all in favour of. That doesn't mean I don't still love my post-its and fancy notebooks. I still like to add ideas and concepts in writing first, but sometimes using tech is the best option to organise those thoughts and save them for the long term. Let's face it, there's only so many post-it notes and notebooks you can store in your house at one time. In this episode, I'm sharing the systems and apps that I use to plan and action my career leap and that I still use to this day in my business to stay productive and focused. So, get ready for a full download. I'm Nicola O'Hara, and I made the leap from a successful corporate career as a leader in learning, development and recruitment to launch my dream business and haven't looked back. Every week, we'll bring you step-by-step strategies, essential knowledge and tools, and share inspirational stories and practical tips so you are ready to take your leap to a career and life you love. This is the Powering Your Passion podcast. Like it or loathe it, technology is here to stay. And whether you're looking to start a new career path while remaining an employee or become self-employed in some form, you can't avoid the rise of the tech solutions that will help us work smarter and be more connected. With the working world set to become far more flexible in terms of where employees work, it's not just the self-employed who now need to understand multiple systems. As an employee, you have to work with whatever system your company has decided to adopt. However, in terms of your career leap project plan, you can choose the tools you want to use or not, and you alone are in charge of this particular project. There are so many options, and I know it's difficult to know which ones are best for you. So in this episode, I want to talk you through the systems and apps that I use to give you some insight into them and to help you decide which ones you are going to choose for yourself. I want to start with my favourite app, which is Forest. I don't know about you, but I'm always picking up my phone to check out my WhatsApp or text messages, my email. I have four email accounts, which are, you know, always packed with with different messages. I'm always signing up for things. Social media, the weather app to find out what kind of day it's going to be. um, And of course, the latest news. Sometimes I don't even realise I'm doing it. It's in my hand before I know it. And then I automatically open an email or an app. And then, as I naturally have bright, shiny object syndrome, I get attracted to a post or a message, which can then lead to minutes or even hours going down some rabbit hole when I was supposed to be focusing on something else. According to a study by the University of California, Irvine, it takes on average of 23 minutes and 15 seconds to get back to the deep focus you had on a task once you've been distracted. So stopping that distraction in the first place is a priority, and it certainly is for me. So when I found the Forest app, it was game-changing. Forest is an app to help you focus and be more productive. The concept is really simple. You plant a virtual tree in a virtual forest and then set a timer for when it will have grown. The timer can be for one minute to a couple of hours. You can choose. Once it's set, if you then try to unlock your phone, the forest screen will show and the message will pop up saying something like, don't look at me or hang in there or... Stop fubbing. 
I actually had to look up what fubbing was. Maybe I'm just behind the times. Apparently, fubbing means the practice of ignoring someone or something in order to pay attention to your phone or other mobile device, something I think a lot of us are guilty of. I usually set the timer for 45 minutes, as I know that after 30 minutes, I'll get a bit distracted and start to look around for you know, something else to, to, to do. But then I'll only have 15 minutes to wait until I can look at whatever I have an urge to look at. What usually happens, though, is once I refocus, then I get another 30 minutes or more done of work. The tree has long grown, but I have worked through that moment of distraction. You can have a sound on to alert you with a chime when the tree has grown, but I prefer to keep the sound off so I don't get distracted and and then just hear the chime and think, oh, I'm going to pick up my phone now. But that's totally a, a personal choice. You may think that why should I care if a virtual tree dies? And well, you don't really. But when you unconsciously pick up your phone and log in and the screen with the tree pops up saying it will die if you continue, it reminds you that you really want to, wanted to focus on something and why that's important to you. And that alone can break the automatic action your brain wanted you to make. Of course, if what you need to do is more important, you can kill the tree by tapping and give up. You actually kill two trees by doing that. But it does make you weigh up if whatever it is can wait a while for you to finish the thing you're doing. Nine times out of ten, I find I don't need to stop. and I often just picked my phone up out of habit. There are other features like for each tree you gain coins and you can save up those coins to buy things to decorate your forest if that floats your boat. But there is one really cool thing you can do and that's plant real trees. Forest partners with a real tree planting organisation, Trees for the Future, to plant real trees on Earth. You can use the virtual coins you've earned by planting trees in a forest to actually plant a real tree in a real forest. The forest team basically donates to their partner and creates planting orders. I used to use forest to help me focus in the hour and a half I had every morning to work on planning my career change and then build my business. And that was before I left to catch my train for my day job. I still use it now when I have some deep work to do and don't want to be distracted. So if you have very little extra time in your week to plan and action your career leap, this app can really help you focus on what's important when you do have some time. Okay, next what I want to talk about, mind mapping. Have you ever drawn mind maps when you were at school, university or getting together ideas at work? Mind mapping is an effective way to take notes and to brainstorm topics or themes. So basically you write down a central theme in the middle of a page and think of any ideas related to that theme and then add them as sub-themes around the central theme. You can put like circles or bubbles around them and then connect them to the central theme with with a line. You then look at the sub-themes and anything else related to them, you add around that sub-theme and so on and so on. Basically, you create ideas by association. One word sparks more and more and more ideas until that particular thought is exhausted and then you go on to the next idea. It's a visual representation of the whole topic. This is really useful to organise your thoughts and to structure them before creating your strategy and planning activities. MindMeister is a system and app that allows you to create mind maps online. As I said before, I love post-its when I'm brainstorming new ideas, but I then use MindMeister to organise my thoughts. I added all my options for changing my career. I added all my options for changing my career into MindMeister. And what I loved about this is that you can move ideas around, connect different themes and ideas in different ways, which really helped me to make my decision. Then once I had my career change idea decided that I was going to start my business, I use it to create a full map of all the things I needed to do to set up my business before I left my corporate job. More recently, I have used it for my high level strategy in terms of where I want to take my business over the next five years. I think you can use other functions to plan and manage tasks in my Meister, but I prefer to use other systems for that. But you can check it out. Asana is the project management system that I use and that I recommend to others to use. And it's what I use for planning my full career leap project from start to finish. It has the ability to create your strategy, plans and tasks down to a granular level. Now, I'm not naturally good at details and this really forces me to record everything I need to do and create deadlines to make sure they happen. And this is going to make me sound like such a geek, but there is something so satisfying when you have planned out projects. Knowing that you have everything mapped out and timed, you feel like you're halfway there. 
Asana is a really fantastic system to assist you in that. It's easy to use and integrates with over 100 other systems and has an app that means you can keep track when you're on the move. It does take a bit of time to include everything in your project plan, but it means that you have a clear direction and gives you a feeling that this transformation project is really happening and you're set on the path towards your new career and life. The next system I want to share is Otter. And no, this isn't a a cute furry water animal. Um, It is actually a system that allows you to record spoken words and it translates it into text. So have you ever been out for a walk or been struck with loads of ideas about something, maybe about potential career options or suddenly realise exactly how you can make your vision of success a reality and want to put all the ideas down? Well, this happens to me quite a lot and I used to stop and write down whatever that thought was into the notes app on my phone. But that was not ideal as it meant a lot of stopping and starting and a short walk ending up taking an hour. That was until I discovered Otter. Otter does not record your voice but can transcribe spoken words into text, which is fantastic when you prefer speaking to writing or just can't write or type at that particular moment. I speak right into the app and it creates a written translation and then I copy it and save it in my files. It's also great if you're on a course or attending a conference and want to take some sound bites of particularly interesting messages. The app has a free version currently, but you can upgrade to Otter Pro to get more features like being able to import video and audio files for transcription. So just go to your app store if you want to, to give it a try. The next system I love is Google Drive. Google Drive is an information organization system. It's where you can store your word processing documents and spreadsheets. You may have heard of Google Docs and Google Sheets and maybe even Google Forms. They work with Google Drive and are stored there. There are many great features in Google Drive, but my favourite is that it allows you to work on documents in real time, which means you can create documents quickly and change the content without having to constantly save it. And you can collaborate with others by giving them access to specific files and share documents with, and files with ease. It has fantastic connectivity with other systems. And particularly now, when in my business I use many other systems, this is really crucial. Now, I was really resistant at first. After many years working in offices in London where Microsoft Office reigns supreme, and with the introduction of Microsoft 365 and Teams, etc., it was a no-brainer for me to use it when I was planning my career leap. Why not? I was pretty good at it and it was where I was most comfortable and I was using it every day in my, in my corporate job. Even when my friends who use Google Drive in their corporate jobs raved about it and business owners in my network swore by it, I was still hesitant. I was so indoctrined into Microsoft Office. And despite the fact I have an iMac and the Office version I've made is for Mac and doesn't really work as well as it does in, in uh, if you have it on a PC, I was still determined to stick with MS Office. That was until I lost a whole freelance article I'd written in Word. I'd been so inspired and and in flow when writing that I forgot to save it. And then I had an electricity glitch and it went off. And when it came back on again, my document was just gone. Totally my fault, of course, as I didn't save it. But it had happened so many times before my corporate job where I've forgotten to save something and it got lost. and, And it's meant many hours where I had to recreate from scratch which usually ended up with some late nights, I really wanted to look at some other option. And I was reminded by a friend that Google Documents automatically saves every few seconds into the cloud. So if your computer dies or something else happens, everything is safe. So I decided to give Google Drive a try just for that reason. And after a bit of getting used to it, I've not looked back. I saved all the documents I needed for my career leap project in Google Drive and found it saved me a whole lot of time and save me stress. Admittedly, you don't have quite the advanced functionality of Word or Excel. Personally, I did not use most of the advanced functions anyway, and I just really need the mainstream features, and Google Docs and Sheets are fine for that. I do use Keynote for Mac for presentations, so don't need to use Google Slides, which are inferior to PowerPoint, so I wouldn't use Google Slides as a replacement for PowerPoint. For me, I want speed, accessibility and flexibility, which is what Google Drive provides. The last one I want to tell you about is a little bit more fun, but also can be quite powerful. I have a clear vision of what I want for my lifestyle to be and what I want to achieve with my business, but sometimes I need to give myself a reminder of all that I'm working for and to see what I've already achieved. iWish is an app that works as a digital vision board 
A vision board is a board which holds a collage of words and pictures that represent your goals and dreams. In the iWish app, you can add your goals and associated pictures. They can be goals from all parts of your life, so like career, family, relationships, wellness, travel, or learning to name but a few. So whenever I have a tough day or want to inspire myself, I can log into the app and get a visual hit of what life's all about. So give it a try with your vision. So there you have it. Those are the systems and apps I use to keep me on track. Give them a try and see if they work for you. If not, don't worry, there are many systems and apps out there. So have a look around and see what suits you better. Tech needs to work for you, not against you. So if you feel or think a system seems too complicated or just doesn't resonate with you, then just go and try something else. We're all unique. For example, I love to start all my creating and planning on paper and then transfer to tech. You may prefer to go straight to tech or not use tech at all. As long as you can plan and take action to power your way to making your passion your career, you're on the right track. So enjoy finding the best match for you and start planning. If you would like to to use any of these uh, systems or apps, I've put links to their web pages and and information on them on the show notes. So do take a look there and join me for the next episode. And remember, everyone deserves to live their passion. So get started. This is your time. Thanks so much for listening. And if you'd like to listen to more episodes, follow or subscribe to this podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon, Google or Stitcher or go to my website, nicolohara.com forward slash podcast. I'd love to hear your feedback on the episode so far, or to know what other topics you'd like me to include. You can go to my show notes and leave a comment there, or leave me a comment on Facebook or Instagram. The links are on my website and in the show notes.